it was quite important for me to know how, how, do, how do we as an NGO engage the UN system. I wanted to attend this course because Ireland was before the UN Committee Against Torture in 2011 and also being reviewed by the UN Human Rights Council under the UPR. When I was here in March, it happened to be the UPR adoption um, for Jamaica as well. So on the 17th of March, I was here and went to the, the, the Human Rights Council. Um, my, um, my action plan was to follow up the UPR and the implementation and to ensure that the government worked with civil society and if not, that civil society was able to um, raise awareness. So they get not only to learn theoretically about these mechanisms, but they get a hands-on experience engaging directly with the, the procedures here in Geneva and they also work with the international service to develop their own action projects that they will implement once they go back to their countries. Once participants are selected, they are allocated a tutor who they meet virtually on the online learning platform one month before the face-to-face -face training begins. The tutor's role is to guide them through the online activities, encouraging them to reflect on how they can use the learning to engage with the UN mechanisms, and they are invited to share their ideas with other participants. They are required to reach an agreement with their organisations on what their action project could be, again before they arrive in Geneva. Their projects need to take the, their organisation's capacity into account and for it to be feasible, and there needs to be organisational buy-in. Once here, they have the opportunity to test out their ideas in simulations and during group tutorials. Some of the participants you will now see have been invited back to train other new participants on how they can use the course to engage with the UN system and they've become mentors for them. The intention was that, that uh, to uh, take this uh, scale and knowledge back with me and disseminate it among the civil society. I have designed it in three steps. And the first step was that uh, we should, uh, I should, uh, with my organization, work out with uh, my people to mainstream the uh, this uh, UN system and also uh, the advocacy process. And the second uh, component of the project is that uh, we will do a broader consultation with civil society organization regarding the uh, selection of the concrete, uh, concrete uh, uh, recommendation which is uh, strategically important for NGO to promote. And then based on that we will develop the concrete indicators and also the monitoring mechanism how NGO can monitor in the in the implementation status. The third component of project is that uh, we will also link the system with the human rights system here in Geneva because we will facilitate the communication between the, the this that system at the, the national level with the human rights institution by by providing them with the shadow reporting, alternative reporting, status reporting against the uh, each each, uh, each uh, 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 committee, uh, which will well, which will at least establish a, a, a communication lag between the uh, the UN system and also uh, the advocacy uh, the advocacy process at the, at the local level. What caught me was the issue of advocacy, international advocacy, and for me that was a good opportunity to be able to learn the skills and to earn, learn the opportunities that are there in terms of international advocacy. To be able to actually, for the first time, talk directly, speak directly to the UN without speaking through legal resources. So that's what I took back with me. And I actually took it back as a specific uh, project activity that I was going to undertake. And one of the things that I took back was, um, how do I prepare, first of all, my own organization to understand UPR. And one of the things that I did is just brief them in staff meeting, any opportunity I kept on talking about UPR. And then also um, being fortunate uh, that um, I'm in charge of the organization, I was able to influence some of the aspects of the programming because we do a lot of human rights education training. So I took it up upon myself to get a 30 minutes an hour to speak to a number of uh, community paralegals, uh, community workers who uh, who, I, who uh, did not know, but I wanted to interest them.
so they can also be part of the preparation and the submission process. We started to work and today we do capacity building for Southern NGOs to work with the system, especially with the UPR of the Universal PR Review mm -hmm. of the Human Rights Council. Uh, we do we share information and we produce a yearbook on how Brazil behaves at the UN and some other information in Portuguese, English and Spanish. Um, and we use the system directly as well. As part of the training course, my action project was on Ireland's examination under the UPR in October 2011. We were planning to lead a coalition of Irish NGOs um, to work on the UPR. So as part of the training course, I pretty much developed that plan in full and returned to Ireland with a project plan that was ready not only for sign off internally but also um, to send to funders in, in order to get funding for the organisation. We were successful in getting um, a substantial amount of funding and we have since implemented that project plan um, which had its genesis in the, the ISHO training course. Training is only as good as the effect it has on practice. Therefore, it is our job at ISHR to find out how our participants have used the learning from our courses and to what end. When our training courses finish, it is only then that the real work begins. Even our selection process is based upon what the participants are going to do after the training. How are they going to implement the learning? What impact will this have? And finally, we have to ask, how will this training help the participants to improve the situation of human rights?